So the next thing that they talk about in chapter one are what they call, they call it methods of acquiring knowledge. And, uh, and this is one of the things I think is a little funny about the way they present this. Some of the terms they give in this chapter, they you know put these little boxes that define the terms as if this is some sort of official uh, term that is used by all scientists everywhere. And it's not, it's just a phrase, methods of acquiring knowledge. It's just a phrase that means exactly what it says. Uh, different techniques are ways of knowing something. And in fact, uh, usually when I teach this, I just call it, I just refer to it as ways of knowing. In other words, you, uh, you, you want to know something about the world, about the state of reality, and there are different techniques or methods or ways of going about finding those things out. So this is not a question of what you know, but more, um, this, these are questions of how. How do you know? How do you know something? And to give this overall context, the reason why they're talking about this is, you know, we are going to spend the next three and a half months, the entire rest of the book, talking about one particular way of knowing, which is research methods. In other words, the methods of science the, as a way of knowing. And uh, so they're trying to, in this first chapter, sort of justify that. They're trying to show you why why do we need to use that particular way of knowing instead of some other alternatives? And so in this chapter, they go over other, what we might call uh, non, non-scientific ways of knowing, okay? Um, so some of the examples they give, and, and this is not an exhaustive list that we could talk about these different possibilities all day, but they talk about the method of tenacity, they talk about uh, intuition as a way of knowing, they talk about authority, you know, just getting your information from expert, an expert on a subject. They talk about what they call the rational method, uh, or you could just call this logic. This is just figuring things out using a logical uh, process of reasoning. Um, and they talk about the empirical, empirical method, which just has to do with observing things. And I'm not going to go into detail on each of these. Um, they give you all of the information in the book, but what I want to do here is kind of show you what sort of stuff should you know about these things. So what they're going to do with each of these things, they're going to, they're going to give a definition of it. They're going to say what it is. You should obviously know that. Um, and then they're going to give some examples in each case. And I, I don't necessarily think you should go through and memorize the examples they give, but make sure that you understand the concept well enough that you would be able to uh, think of which, with each of these things. Uh, think of an example. So if someone says, uh, you know, how do you know something uh, by the method of authority, give an example of someone using the method of authority to know something. Um, and, then, and then what they're trying to lead into is this idea that each of these has some kind of limitations. It has limitations or problems with it. And, and the idea is that because of those limitations or problems, that is why we turn to the scientific method, why we turn to scientific research methods, because those are a deliberate systematic attempt uh, to know things in a way that, that overcomes these limitations. So to make this a little clearer, um, I will go into some detail on, on at least one. Let's just pick one. Let's look at the method of intuition. So as, as a definition, um, this is just, you know, you, you believe something, you believe something um, because it feels, feels true. So if you get a gut feeling about something, you don't really know why you feel a particular way, um, but you feel that something is true, that's your intuition. You probably actually have a pretty good intuition about what intuition is. 
the example um, that they give in the book is, well, they give a couple of different examples. One is uh, just, you know, you, you have some kind of an idea that, um, uh, like, you know, know your friend is having a bad day. And again, with intuition, you don't know how you know that. There's something you're picking up on, but you're not consciously aware of it. So an important part of the idea of intuition is that you're not, not, conscious, not consciously aware of the process, of the method. I'm going to say of the, of the process. In other words, the way that you get the information, you're not consciously aware of that. Once you get the knowledge, you are aware of it. So the idea is your brain is taking in information and processing it automatically, subconsciously. And then at the end of this process, you end up with a conscious awareness of sort of what your, your subconscious brain's ideas were, right? It took in some information. It made some very rapid calculations. And now it's saying, here's the truth, or here's the right decision. Now, this is actually a really powerful, important thing that your brain does. Intuition, it being this automatic process, it, it, it being able to pick up on all kinds of things that you're not even consciously aware of, and give you a snap decision, this happens very fast. And you know, we need to make hundreds and hundreds of decisions in our, in our every, every single day in our lives. Um, and we don't have a lot of time to make them rationally or base them on scientific research. So often your intuition is going to give you a remarkably fast and remarkably uh, accurate idea of, of what the right choice is. But it does have limitations. The limitations come from this fact that it's, it's not conscious, right? So y there is, in, in the book, the way they say this is there is no, no mechanism uh, no, no, my pen spazzed out there. No mechanism for telling, and this is, I'm rewording this a little to simplify it, for telling um, true conclusions from untrue conclusions. In other words, yes, there are other ways, not intuition, not the method of intuition, that there are other ways that you can tell whether your intuition was correct, right? You can make observations, you can reason through things logically, you can gather some evidence to see if your intuitions were correct, but those are not part of intuition itself. So the idea is what they're trying to show you is you cannot just use intuition to get through life if you really want to have an accurate understanding of what's happening in the world. So it's not to say that it's not essential, it's an incredibly important part of how our brains work. And there are often times where we should pay very close attention to our intuition, where our intuition is telling us something very important. But what they're saying is that because of these limitations, it's, it's not enough by itself. And the limitation is because we're not consciously aware of the process, we don't know how we arrived at the conclusion we arrived at. We got some kind of information. Our brain interpreted that information subconsciously, automatically, and then it generated this conclusion, this feeling about what is correct. Uh, but we don't know how it got there. So if it made a mistake, which it often does with our intuition, we won't know it. And the end result will be that we'll feel right even when we're wrong. So this is how I summarize it is, and, and they don't say this in your textbook, but this is how I remember it. You feel right. Um, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this a little differently. This actually comes from a great TED talk, and I'll, I'll post the link to it in case you're curious. Um, but being wrong, when you're using intuition, being wrong feels, what does it feel like? Well, you might say it feels bad. It feels terrible. But that's what it feels like to find out that you are wrong. When you're just wrong and you don't know it because your intuition made a mistake and that's all subconscious and you have no access to it, being wrong feels, it feels like being right. And so that is why 
we can't use intuition alone. And, there, and the same sort of idea of having a definition, an example of it, and limitations that justify why we have to look at science, we're going to see that's the case with all these, with tenacity, intuition, authority, just using a rational or logical method, or just using an empirical method, using any one of these things by itself is going to have limitations. So as you study through this section, you should make sure that you know, you know the, each of these things, the definition, be able to come up with an example, be able to uh, recognize an example of this if you saw it. If I told you something like, Jane is walking down the street and there's a guy coming the other way on the street and she just has a really bad feeling about it that makes her cross to the other side of the road, you should be able to recognize that that's the method of intuition. And then you should also be able to say what are the limitations or problems with that way of knowing.